So let's start uh, the project. We do a new project. We go inside F and uh, Udini and uh, we call it uh, mock real time and uh, I don't need actually Alembic I don't need the comp I don't need the scripts I don't need desktop I will need the imported okay. no sorry imported view and I need the no, cache no, because we will create. Ah, sorry, we, we had the export, but we will create it after. So, uh, from here, I want to set uh, a new variable that is uh, inside here. I will call cache, and will be f dot uh, cache. So we can address it uh, when when needed. So I will just split these top bottom and here, sorry, top bottom and here I will add uh, a geometry spreadsheet. So we have uh, everything that we can every time check here. I want uh, to close uh, all pane and tabs and here I want uh, mm, the grid points I like and so if I just create a geometry node I just press P to see the parameters and uh, you can press Z for the shapes and C for the color. And with O, if you have like a huge network, you can uh, uh, have like an overview of the entire network. And uh, I will save this. GP. Back. Real time. And so we have these kind of uh, uh, Houdini interface. Okay, first thing first, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, what is a particle system. So I will just uh, go and show you. Uh, the basics of a particle system. So let's start from a point. Let's add one point. I will just switch to dark background. And uh, here you can see our point that is numbered there. So we have uh, a number uh, over the point and a coordinate system. So coordinate systems uh, in 3D usually are represented as a vector because uh, vector uh, usually have uh, an intrinsic uh, uh, direction about, so you are using vector to give the idea of a direction, but in fact, coordinates are direction from the world center, which is zero, zero, zero. You can see it here. So we have one point and basically uh, this point do something over the time. So for example, uh, we can say, I just drop down a point wrangle and we can say, just give it some room here. Just add on the Z axis, not the X axis, 
a number. So in this case, if I say one, you can see that right now the point from zero went to one. If I say point one, of course, it just moved a little bit. This doesn't change in time. It's just like in this moment, I added point one. If I say point one multiplied by time, you can see that the points start to move. And right now we have uh, uh, a, a time span that in the animation is set to 24 frames per second. So basically uh, we have point 0.1, point 0.1 multiplied by 10, we have 240 frames. That basically is uh, the entire timeline. So multiplied by 10, it reached the one. So basically we cover one meter because we are moving 0.1 each frame. E uh, sorry, not each frame, each uh, uh, amount of time. So basically if we say one in one second, we move of one of uh, point 0.1 and so in 10 seconds we move uh, of one and this is the first concept that we should uh, keep in mind so we are accumulating a movement but in this case i can't really change the behavior i mean time is just a multiplier of a constant so to do that i will just create a very simple, very simple particle system. So let's, uh, let's start saying, uh, let's start to use a common term that we will find as well in uh, Niagara, that is velocity. So we say that uh, we have a point one velocity over X. And we drop down a solver. Basically, solver have some inputs. You can see right now we can just say shift L and we color those inputs of black because we don't use them. This will be our in mesh. And we have this node that is the previous frame. So basically what the, um, actually what the solver does is uh, takes the first frame, the mesh, and then from the second frame, he accumulate uh, something that comes from the previous frame. So I will just do a switch. I will put the in mesh and the previous frame. And here I will say $f more than, uh, we can say $f star. So basically, you can see that from the second frame, the switch starts to use the previous frame. And this is what will happen. So let's start saying, okay, we say v at p plus equal v at I just drop down an output. node so I'm sure that uh, when I go out from the node uh, this will be the output and uh, here I simply apply the velocity to the position and uh, if you scroll here yeah it works sometimes it uh, it doesn't work but let's say you see we have the points that does exactly the same but 
The main difference is that here, right now, we can start uh, uh, making some uh, variations over the network. So um, this is not uh, the, um, the aim of this course to, to build up uh, a particle system from scratch. This is just uh, to show you what's happening, because for example, I can just uh, use a noise uh, and keep incoming velocity and add uh, point one noise and this uh, will of course move in a different way our point and uh, if we create uh, a particle system with a pop network basically this is what's happening inside the particle system you see points are created over the surface there are several ways also we will not talk about particle systems in Houdini but uh, if I add uh, I don't know a pop force for example You can see that uh, our particles just start to move uh, through time and if you see in the dynamic context basically you have exactly a solver that uh, uh, simply uh, just calculate what's happening inside all uh, the different computational process of the solver. So um, there are some terms that uh, I would like to uh, see with you about uh, uh, the particles. So uh, particles have uh, some different attributes. We can also see the attributes here. And uh, you can, it's important to see these attributes because are uh, basically almost the same attributes that we have uh, um, in uh, the Niagara system. So we have an age and we have uh, a life. So basically life uh, is uh, the complete life cycle of the particle and age is the current point uh, of the life cycle. So if we have a particle of uh, uh, that can live three seconds and we are at frame 24 age will be one and life will be three uh, and from uh, dividing age by life uh, you can get uh, the normalized age that is something that you have exactly in uh, Niagara uh, you have exactly these kind of attributes Another attribute that is really important, uh, of course, we have V, that is the velocity. Basically, velocity is the result of all the calculations. So for each frame, you apply forces, uh, you apply velocity and so on. And the sum, I mean, the end calculation of V will, uh, uh, will give uh, to the system uh, the data to move each point uh, in uh, the space so this is basically um, another attribute that you will find uh, exactly in uh, niagara because all particle systems are pretty similar and they work in a quite uh, similar fashion so uh, i think you will feel at home when you learn where data are the only thing that uh, you have in niagara but is not uh, uh, active by default is the ID. So basically ID is uh, completely different from uh, PTNAM because uh, point number change in time. So when a particle dies, the other particles basically shift the point number. So you can have uh, point numbers that change. And of course, another particle born the next, uh, the next frame. So point number is uh, different in most of the cases is different 
each frame. Uh, and so ID is a number that is given to the particle system uh, and uh, each particle have a different ID that is stable through the simulation. We will see that you can enable it in Niagara and uh, it, it's uh, basically uh, something required for some kind of effects like spawning particles from another system. Uh, but it's something that you need to enable inside the Niagara. It's not like Houdini that have this by default. So this is important uh, to understand. And uh, so basically what's happening right now is that we have particles that spawn and they are points. Basically, they are points in space. And uh, in this case, uh, you can have uh, some additional attributes. For example, we can say at p scale is equal a certain kind of scale um, multiplied by, for example, the ramp of life that is h divided by life multiply by pito one rand i will use id otherwise they will pop through the time i just had a random seed they will take 0.21 and this is our initialization and for example i can say tonic Okay, okay, they are really small. You can see right now they we have a ramp uh, over life. So basically, um, here because also we have an incredible long life. And you can see that uh, the particles simply fade. You see here, they fade the size over life. And it's basically this principle is the same that we will use inside Niagara. So we have an initial, initial state is the first particle starts, uh, attributes are settled up. We have an update, so we calculate for each frame, for each particle, where they should move, how they should behave, and uh, what should happen and once we reach uh, the end uh, of uh, the calculation we go to uh, a rendering stage so basically we put something over particle and we will see in a real-time uh, rendering engine basically what's happen what happen usually uh, for at the rendering stage, we can have different kind of render. In this case, uh, if it if it was uh, something in Niagara, this kind of rendering technique is called the mesh render because we put uh, like a mesh over the points. But on the core ground, uh, we have points. This is the basic of all the particle systems. So I have a new project. I just created a um, first-person example.
from the games uh, option and uh, I just go inside the content, I create a new folder that I call the GP VFX. I set the color. I just uh, use this because I like very much to be able to color the, the meshes and I will just create a new folder that I will call particles and uh, I will color it uh, with red uh, just because uh, the particle systems are colored with red. So first things first, if you go inside VFX, you see you have a lot of uh, different uh, kind of uh, elements and uh, we will focus uh, on basically two uh, or three elements mostly that are uh, emitter and system. So basically emitter, you can uh, think at emitter like a small single element that spawn things. So basically if I create an emitter, let's say a fountain, and I call it, usually I call it NG for Niagara, um, M for emitter, uh, first, let's say. You can't drag this, you see, you can't basically drag the Niagara emitter, because if you open it, basically you have a single emitter, you can't add any additional things inside the the single emitter but uh, for example we can say we don't want the velocity in cone we don't want gravity and we want to add velocity and say uh i don't know random. i'm just uh, i'm just uh, doing some uh, tweaks uh, just uh, for uh, to show you some stuff it's not uh, uh, something that for now you need uh, to understand. We will go uh, into it very soon. And say 25 and 150. Sorry. Okay. So we color it uh, uh, like red. This is our first emitter, let's say, and uh, you can duplicate stuff using the duplicate, and we call it second. Let's say that we don't want vertical velocity, and we want a spreading horizontal. Okay, this is our second emitter. So basically we can't drag this, but we can just say, let's do a system. So Niagara system is what you will put inside the scene and will hold all the emitters. So uh, you can say, um, copy existing emitter. And uh, of course uh, it will give you some uh, example, for example, not in library and uh, you can also mm, let's see if it's this thing okay you have uh, our first and second emitter i can say okay okay if we just start with the first and uh, i call it niagara system uh, so in this case you can see that it spawn our first emitter but if i dive inside right now i can for example add an emitter and i just search for second and you see right now i save apply and i have both the emitter inside the um the scene if you want uh, to uh, switch off this view you can press g and you enter the game mode you can also uh, select it here game view 
and it's basically the same thing. This is just the, the shortcut with G. And uh, basically, this is uh, the way that uh, why using single emitter? Because this kind of approach, for example, you can do like uh, uh, if you have an explosion, you can have uh, one emitter that is the core, one emitter is debris, one emitter is, uh, and then uh, you can use them like uh, small templates to compose your own system. So basically, it's a very good way to uh, be to have something modular inside uh, the the system. So once. Uh, you can also create a system directly without the emitter. Uh, you have some template, for example, let's say I want fountain. Sometimes uh, the, um, the preview just get a little bit confused. Do not pay too much, uh, too much attention. So I will say this. And you can see I have my uh, fountain emitter. So if I dive inside, I have this. Another thing that you should uh, um, being uh, able is that, for example, you see if I try with the de delete to cancel a module, I can't because it says this module cannot be deleted because is inherited. So if I change something in the template, let me let me check. I, I don't remember if it changed everywhere. Have a look. So, yes, you can see that if I change the original emitter, it will change through also the system. But I can, however, for example, this is my second emitter. It, I, I didn't change anything. So I cannot, for example, avoid the spawn. I cannot change the structure. The original structure is not possible to be changed, is immutable, this uh, structure. But I can, for example, if I have the blue, but I want this to be, uh, I don't know, uh, green, I can do uh, set for example, new existing parameters, and I can say I want to set the color, particle color, and I say I want it uh, green. And you can see right now I am, uh, let's say, override, uh, I am overriding the original attribute. I can say I don't want velocity, I can just switch off the module. If I add modules like color, I always can delete them because they are not changing the structure of the original emitter. So this is uh, pretty important, this thing. And uh, let's see in this other system that it's a little bit easier. Uh, you see, you have uh, some uh, you have like some section emitter settings spawn update spawn update and you have this kind of uh, setup and i will explain uh, what does it mean so basically let's start from the emitter settings you can open basically the uh, niagara view you have uh, here you can have some scratch pad uh, we will go we will see a little bit scratch pad after but uh, for now just leave it like that if you give a little bit more room you have here a list of the different attributes divided by the context the so-called namespace uh, uh, it's uh, something that you can change uh, for example you see that we have emitter you have particles you have engine there, there are some other, um, let's say, namespace. And any system, you can see that uh, in the emitter, you have a different layout. You just have the single block. 
you do not have this element this element is uh, let's call it like uh, the general system um, menu here we have uh, uh, we will go by each element we have system settings and the first thing is user parameters so here user parameters are extremely useful to uh, because they are like the door for your system and the environments in Unreal. I give you an example. If I create with plus, uh, I don't know the color. You see that I have a new user parameter, and I can rename it particle color. So if I compile and save. Right now, I have the system here, and uh, if I select my system and I scroll down, you see that I have the parameters, override parameters here, so I can say is purple, but nothing happened. Why? Because basically I didn't uh, attach the, this element is not attached to anything so if i go here we have the user parameter but we need to hook it up actually so we know that we can't change anything we can't delete anything so i will say set color uh, set sorry set new or existing parameter and i will say uh color so here uh, one important thing that I mean, if you already use uh, Niagara, probably you should uh, completely skip this uh, lesson because it uh, can look uh, a little bit uh, tedious because maybe you already know uh, this kind of uh, workflow. But if you are new to Niagara, uh, I, I think it will take a little bit just to, to get used to this workflow. So you have set parameters, you add the module. I put it in spawn. We will go in a, in a while in the different stage of the particle system, but I set parameter in spawn. Spawn is the first stage of the particle. And here I can add the parameter. I do plus and I search for color. As you can see, we have different kind of um, name we have linear color color array color from curves but these will create i will show you a new parameter that in this case is named my color so basically this will not change anything because it's just creating another attribute that you can see right now is exposed inside the particle attributes it's here it's basically creating a new color it's just when uh, in udini you just uh, use uh, for example a pop rango to create uh, an attribute uh, over particles this doesn't mean that you are using this attribute it just means that uh, you are setting up uh, an attributes and you can see we have a namespace that we can modify so if i right click uh, you see that uh, we have different namespace stack context transient i mean we can but we this is not what we want we don't want these uh, attributes so let's go uh, let's search color and you can see in inside the, the uh, sorry because it was not uh, updating the attribute so i do set new or existing attribute and they do plus and a search call you have this kind of uh, text uh, r uh, means that uh, you are creating uh, a new attribute actually you are not using uh, another attribute so i will just Sorry that uh, I don't know why Substance Substance Designer stopped it. Okay. So if I do plus and I search for color, you can see that appears specific parameter and we have parameters with a 
context like a namespace and in this case is particle we have particle initial color which is the first color that is set up over particles and there is a particle color so we can just say particle color and we have a color right now we can really set the color because we are setting one of the core attribute of uh, the particle and here niagara if you uh, put on the chain you can make a lot of uh, um, operation this will be i suggest you to get used to this because it's something that you will use a lot for example make a linear color and you see it's split and i can say i want it red and uh, with alpha one and or with alpha point one you have uh, a lot of if you if you press the arrow it will go back so if i they make a linear color from uh, uh, vector and float it's split in a different way uh, color uh, from uh, curve and it gives you different uh, stuff and uh, make color let's say and for example here you can say like this and uh, you created this kind of interface with uh, the color and the alpha in a number and uh, basically yeah this is something we will go in depth but here i can also say let's check uh, is particle color my name and i say particle and you can see right now appears particle color with the namespace user i hook it up here by default is white this is a suggestion that i think you should uh, uh, learn from the beginning uh, just uh, try to keep uh, the system by default more default uh, most default as possible so uh, as you can see already it gives me the possibility to uh, change the color here but of course also with blueprint as well it's not only something uh, uh, i mean this is the connection between uh, the external world and uh, niagara so for example if you want uh, to set uh, the spawn rate and you want uh, i don't know to lerp between uh, 0 and uh, 250 you can set the parameter new float and set uh, the parameter intensity And you can uh, um, you can also do operation. For example, you want you don't want lerp. Let's say you want uh, to multiply float like uh, one hundred and fifty with intensity but you want to be sure that intensity maybe do not go over between the range zero one you can do a clamp float you put in the float the intensity you have the user data intensity that is clamped between zero one and this is your actual Uh, where it is okay yeah density we have an issue with the mouse 0.25 and you can see that you can easily set the, the intensity we can say for example open level blueprint and 
let's drag this. Let's say set Niagara variable flow. We do a timeline. And uh, inside of the timeline, we do an add that is five seconds. And we want uh, this to be zero. I want three seconds. Two seconds. And I want this to be one. And I want these to be zero. And I save, compile, and here I want to set the intensity. Intensity by this value. This will be loop. It's just, uh, of course, for testing purpose. And so I will, oh, we can, it can run. You can see that it decrease and increase and uh, is uh, driven by the blueprint timeline animation. And this is possible because we exposed uh, this parameter. This is, I mean, this workflow is probably one of the most uh, used uh, things that you will use uh, in your entire work uh, with uh, um, real time uh, VFX. So let's continue and let's start uh, to have a look uh, over the main properties of the emitter. So um, I will try. We'll try to put. I will kill this emitter. So we just focus on the one that uh, we need. And I want this to be like that. So we have enough space. So one thing, when you select the main cycle, like meter settings, particle spawn, here it will like collapse all the node inside in the same view. Uh, so it's quite uh, useful if you want to have an overview. So um, first uh, I will go through the different, uh, sorry, I will just make a new level because I don't like to have this gun in the middle. We have intensity, probably zero. Yeah, we have intensity zero. I just put them orange so I can see them. And uh, I want uh, this, uh, no, I want this orange. So I can see them and I will just copy and paste these. And rotate them by 90. Okay, so one important thing, just try every time to showcase and look at your particle in a scene 
because uh, if you work uh, on black uh, total black screen uh, it will be really really difficult to judge the system and uh, while if you work uh, like with in this kind of context uh, can be really hard to judge uh, um, the the space because basically is a, a, a space without uh, elements so if you need the drag uh, uh, for example a cube you know that this is one meter cube so basically if you drag this uh, and you make uh, the scale uh, in Z like 0.8 uh, this is the average let's say uh, the average size of a man so uh, you can have uh, like a real scale reference to work with so um, let's go to the emitter settings we'll... here okay so first thing is local space if i set it to local space basically you will see that if I move it, all the particles do not take in account of the movement of the system. So if I move them like that, uh, uh, no, because they have gravity. So if they don't have gravity, you can see that uh, they can simply move uh, in this way. But uh, if I put them in world space, you can see that uh, they just uh, keep uh, the world space uh, direction. This is the difference. You see? Okay. So if you want to reset the system, you have these arrows that will bring it to zero in a very fast so uh deter determinism is uh, an option that you can use uh, if you need uh, something uh, that uh, it's not uh, it's uh, the same so basically when you work with noise uh, uh, especially in cg you work with the pseudo uh, random number so basically you work not with complete randomness because it would be extremely expensive in calculation but you work with random based on seed so basically you feed the random with a number that most of the time uh, try um, to be different so basically you have a system that behaves in one way and uh, could behave uh, in a different uh, in a different way maybe the next time uh, you use if you want a consistent behavior you can uh, use determinism and uh, you can see that uh, it uh, explicitly tells you which kind of seed that you want to give me and in this way the system should behave uh, for example for cinematic in uh, uh, the best way i mean it should be the same every time so uh scene target tells you if it's if it's a cpu or gpu so it will run mostly the calculation mostly over cpu or gpu and uh, of course they have some differences some modules works only in gpu some modules works only in cpu uh, and in case you enable GPU, you will see that uh, uh, it, there is a warning and uh, the, the, the emitter switch to this yellowish icon. And uh, you should put fixed bound because uh, with GPU particles, if they are out of bound, they will stop uh, to, to work. So uh, basically, uh, you need to be careful to set this because if it's too big, basically you will lose uh, uh, or it will be less uh, optimized uh, the stuff if it's too slow let's try probably here doesn't work you see you have these 
kind of situation because you are out of the bound of the simulation so basically it will stop to work especially uh, you need uh, to to try to set up the bound uh, in uh, the i mean you need uh, to find uh, for example in this case uh, you can set it up uh, a little bit smaller like minus 50 Okay. Yeah, it sometimes it disappears, but I mean it's pretty. Ah, okay. It disappeared here, for example. So um let's put it to default. Uh, then let's dive inside this. You have uh, uh, another option that is pretty much important for some kind of modules. As uh, you remember, we talked about it uh, while we were watching uh, Houdini particle system, that is persistent IDs. If you enable, basically each particle we store a persistent id for example for some kind of effect like spawning from another emitter is uh, you need to enable it and it will throw an error if you do not have enabled um, and so this is important scalability you can set uh, if uh, this particle system will be omitted in some uh, kind of uh, uh, preset for the quality of the game and uh, you have uh, some other elements like simulation stages that you use uh, to write down uh, in a box uh, graded with it, uh, 2D but I mean these are the, the main stuff that you need to remember of these emitter properties that are, that is the locker space it's really important uh, because some effects uh, should work uh, in local space, uh, some other should work uh, in world space. So this is really important to, to know and uh, to understand why it works and how it works. Determinism is important in certain really, really specific situation, not every time. And of course, a sim target, it's really important because, for example, if you have like huge quantity of particles, definitely you should uh, evaluate to go uh, over GPU solution rather than CPU. Uh, but some module work, uh, for example, sometimes only in CPU or only in GPU. I mean, it's every time you need to find uh, the best balance that you can. Then uh, you have uh, the spawn and in the emitter update. We will go in a, in a little bit uh, in the stage context. I will just finish uh, to have a look over parameter for the emitter update and then uh, we will go over the, the context uh, that uh, we have. So we have the emitter state uh life cycle if you of course uh, you can uh, leave the mouse to have some hints uh, determines whether the life cycle of the meter is calculated by the system or by the meter so uh, you can see that uh, inside the system we have some other we have the user parameter we have system properties uh so I, we will go in a in a little bit about that but uh, you have uh, some elements like warm up, for example. I think of all these these things, uh, you should really remember two things. One is uh, in the system properties, uh, really important. You can override the fixed bounds. 
but uh, you can also um, set the warm up time. So basically, warm up time is, for example, if I have uh, effects like dust motes or fishes, uh, fish flocking, uh, insects, uh, something that uh, should, uh, um, when I see it, uh, should be already present in in the in the space so if i put for example big life cycle when the game starts you will see particles slowly appear and then have like a full stable situation in this way you can say okay i just want it already at three and uh, in this way basically the um, the emitter is uh, uh, already warmed up it starts already at a certain point and in the system state uh, you have uh, the possibility to uh, complete uh, for example i i kill uh, the emitter and i complete uh, the entire uh, I, I leave the emitter to finish and uh, at the end uh, it will kill the system or i will kill immediately systems and emitters together we have the loop behavior, so this, the, the entire system, because we have also this parameter for the single emitter, can be quite uh, confusing sometimes. In this case, it's the system, so the system will be will loop infinitely or will loop just once or multiple times. How many times it will loop and how long will be the loop? So this is what uh, makes the difference and the recalculate duration uh, for each loop uh, for example you can use it to uh, do a different loop length according to each loop and loop delay basically uh, just as the na as the name suggests just uh, offset the this loop of this time and you have you can see that you have exactly the same uh, elements inside each emitter so you can use this uh, for each emitter to set up the stuff and you have the spawn rate we will see uh, right now also some other option and i want you to talk uh, i want to to talk a little bit about the different kind of stages like spawn and update so let's uh, watch because we have seen that we have some properties here you see in this module but these modules are simply modules that uh, uh, for example here we can get rid of modules because this is a system created over a template that is embedded in the system so basically uh, we do not refer to one of our emitters so we can uh, easily change this so we can for example get rid of sphere location we can get rid of uh, uh, add uh, velocity in cone and of course if if you just press play a plus you will have a lot of uh, different uh, module uh, and all those modules uh, change according to the different state uh, and the different stage for example the particles the level at particle level is different from emitter so um this is pretty important because uh, uh probably we will not go inside all the data because you have uh, for example so groom uh, uh, location particles i mean there are a lot of things but let's try uh to go with the most used setup for example you have seen a spawn rate and basically spawn rate just to set how many particles you should spawn uh yeah uh, there is gravity so i think sorry i don't understand why it do not work I have some strange behavior to be sincere because it doesn't work uh, 
uh, some control like control Z. I don't know. Oh well. Uh, we have, uh, for example, the spawn rate. Spawn rate uh, is uh, how much, uh, how many particles per second you spawn. And you can see that uh, uh, I will not use gravity force. I will just add uh, a velocity. And uh, I will just uh, use this uh, to make a random range vector. And I say minus 25 on all the axes. 25 on all the axes. You can do you can do a lot of things uh, in the same way. I mean, you can do the same things in a lot of ways. Sorry, the wrong thing. You can, for example, say random vector, which is a unit vector, and say, okay, I want the twenty-five, and you get the same because basically we create a vector normalized, and you can just increase the value. I think it's extremely powerful Niagara because you have a complete control over each element and uh, so basically you can spawn a rate there is also the probability per loop to spawn so i can say for example there is a, a 0 0.3 probability that it will spawn and you can see that uh, we have much less particle uh, radar than one and it's pretty interesting you can also randomize the float i want between zero and uh, 125 particles and so you can see that uh, sometimes they spawn very few particles sometimes they spawn more particles this uh, um, another element that is really important uh, uh, most of the time with the old niagara system there wasn't this option evaluation type so um, basically if you just do it in update we will talk uh, of uh, uh, the different states uh, like update and so on in a, in a minute but uh, uh, of course if you did it in update every time the random was different so they put uh, this option and, and the workaround was to set an attribute uh, in spawn during spawn and refer to that in update to have like a unique number but right now they just put uh, the evaluation every frame or spawn only it's pretty uh interesting and you can uh, for example recalculate the random each loop so basically each loop will have a different uh, seed just to keep uh, as uh, if you remember uh, just to keep uh, these uh, um, randomness this variance in the loop and uh, so this is pretty uh, important. Let's continue to talk uh, about the spawn stuff. If we just search for spawn, we have four different kinds: spawn per frame, spawn per unit. I think spawn per frame is marked experiment. Uh, this goes. Uh, I mean, do not use a spawn per frame because it's uh, experimental and I think it's just you can just uh, take spawn rate and it's okay the the main the spawn kind that uh, is used apart rate is per spawn burst instantaneous what it does is just like a unique shot of particles you can see that uh, at the beginning you start uh, having the spawn Usually, this kind of uh, spawn, uh, you can use it, for example, in combination. You can have, for example, another fountain that instead of spawn burst, have uh, like spawn rate. Sorry, I was in the wrong spawn rate. So you can see that uh, we have, uh, I don't know, 25. And uh, we want uh, gravity here. Yeah. I will I will talk about this issue, but you can see we can combine stuff. You can combine stuff uh, in the same um, in the same 
emitters. So you can say 25 and uh, let's say 20. So you can see that uh, we have uh, a spawn. Of course, uh, gravity is applied to all the particles in this case. So basically, uh, it will uh, spawn. It spawn every time like this uh, shot. So uh, one of the things that uh, mostly you use a lot of time, you will find yourself using is spawn burst with one single uh, cycle. So if I say spawn once, uh, I will in this uh, put uh, once uh, as well. Once. I can I have some issue I think uh, I have some issue I will uh, uh, restart uh, the um, the the engine give me one second so I don't know exactly what happened um, I just created a new system because uh, didn't work the the previous one I didn't manage probably something changed inside the property uh, so I will get rid of spawn rate and I will do a spawn burst so let's say 250 and you see so uh, another topic is how I can preview the effects. So if I keep my Niagara Windows editor here and I have these, I can just press the spacebar and this will trigger the effect. The other way is um, it works only with the American keyboard or U uh, UK. So if you put uh, your, um, you select in the world outliner the system, you can just press uh, the slash uh, near uh, on the left of shift. So basically you trigger the system. This is the, um, the other way. So let's go back here. And uh, if I put here once, you see that uh, uh, right now is looping in the preview because we have the timeline here that is uh, moving. But uh, if I go here, you can see that once I press, uh, it stops. I can put uh, this one as well as once. And I can put it like two. And uh, it works. So this is quite uh, useful, this uh, once option for like, uh, I don't know, you have an explosion of debris, it's once, so basically it explodes and do not continue to, to spawn constantly. Uh, another option that uh, I will put, uh, uh, sorry, I will put these to infinite and they will put back these to infinite as well so um, another thing is I can get rid of spawn burst and uh, I just sh show you the last spawn option that is spawn per unit you can see basically uh, spawn per unit you set a basic unit we can say 250 for example and you can see that each 250 it spawn a particle. Uh, let's say 25, of course, the movement will spawn more particles. So this is uh, important. Just keep uh, really be uh, careful because this can drive uh, a lot of uh, um, particles. You have uh, a movement tolerance. So you have a, a certain tolerance over for example if i say 0.25 you see that uh what if the amount 
it. You can see that uh, sometimes it do not spawn. Not every time spawn. You see? Only if the movement is high, it spawn. This can be useful to filter uh, the movement. And then you have max movement threshold. So basically, if it moves faster of this, top spawning can be useful if you have, for example, cars that goes very fast, you can stop some uh, uh, elements according to the velocity and uh, spawn probability is basically the same. So this uh, can be useful, for example, if you have uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, 0.2 and uh, we have uh, two, so we spawn. Uh, I will show you why to use that many times. If you have a, like a spawn rate of 35 or 50, let's say, you see that our effect uh, is spawning and I... Okay, it's here. Uh, you can see that if I move, uh, the spawn uh, becomes really, really, really more sparse, uh, less uh, dense. So, for example, if I want to keep uh, this, I can combine both. So you can see that uh, um, basically I can just decrease like by, let's say. You can see that I can keep consistent flux uh, over time because uh, when uh, the movement is faster, basically the spawn per unit will help me to get uh, denser elements inside the the systems so this is i think uh, we had uh, the um, an overview of all the spawn uh, system you can combine all the spawn together you can have uh, for example a spawn burst sometimes uh, uh, and have uh, together spawn units per and the uh, rate i mean that there, there are i just show you all the way to spawn particle with the different option inside the emitter update and uh, the importance of loop uh, behavior. So we have seen the spawn type. We can spawn per unit, we can spawn at a certain rate, we can just throw a single burst of spawn and all this part is inside the emitter update. Um, we will then start to see the actual particle life. So in this part, we enter in the particle, uh, let's say life cycle. So each particle is spawned. And here we can see the module uh, where the particle is spawned and uh, then once spawn it have a life cycle that is this update inside the particle spawn there is a module that is initialized particle initialized particle holds most of the information that we need uh, to set about the particle so we can have a lifetime mode you can set it to direct so every particle will be one in this case we can set to random in this case it will be uh, for example between 0 0.5 and 1.75 is uh, all these number are in seconds we have a color mode so here we can set the color of the particle we can also set a random range for example, between, let's say, in this case, you can see we have uh, uh, each particle at the spawn uh, will choose between a color between those two. So basically between white and red. And uh, 
we have uh, it it uh, it say if we want uh, to change the position but we will see uh this can be changed uh, in many ways um we have the mass mass uh, is used for force uh, simulation uh in this case is between 0 0.75 and 1.25 here we have the sprite attributes so basically how big is its sprite we can set as uniform and say for example 25 you can see we have these or we can set it between so here you have several options because we have uniform random uniform so for example between 6 and 12 we can also set non-uniform so for example we can say 25 and you can see we have like this rice shape or random non-uniform so basically you will have different stretch types so i think right now it's worth uh, uh explaining what is exactly a particle we know at this stage spawn and update basically are just points points in space that holds some informations uh, and uh, how can we if you remember in udini we have seen for example the id of each particle and all the different kind of attributes that each particle holds uh, in its life cycle. We can also check all this information directly inside this uh, system. It's pretty similar to uh, the Houdini, because if you remember in Houdini, we use the geometry spreadsheet and here there is the attribute spreadsheet. So you can see here we have the sequencer that is going. We can stop it here and say capture do it we need to select a system capture okay it needs to be in play so as you can see here we have all the attributes of uh, the particle we have the attribute at particle spawn at system update so basically we can see uh, the different attributes per system for example, the fountain is this one, age, how long the entire system uh, is, uh, is working. So system age is the same. We have a lot of attributes. We have particle spawn. So when the particle spawn, we have these values. And you can see there are a lot of attributes. Really, really, really a lot. You, can, you have, for example, the sprite size, you have the ID because uh, we, uh, you have unique ID, we, you have the velocity, pretty similar to what we have seen in Houdini. We have the lifetime of the particle, the normalized age. So basically, uh, we have the color here, the distance travel, a lot, lot of attributes inside each particle and uh, those attributes you can also just uh, to finish the attribute spreadsheet sometimes you create your own attributes is something a little bit more advanced but uh, if you need to create your own attributes for example uh, can be useful useful to um i mean to to find stuff here so you can also filter the attributes. You can toggle all. So, for example, I, I wanted to check normalized age. And you can see the normalized age is pretty important if you want, for example, to check. I give you an example. If I just say set new parameter and I say I want a float and I want to call it my random. Between zero and three, you can make the system go capture. 
and uh, I want to filter all the attributes except my random. And you can see we have a random number for each particle between zero and three. So uh, this is pretty important, this attribute spreadsheet, because it's actually where you can debug your uh, the situation of your attributes of or your particle. For example, you can see if there are some strange velocity or if you are using your own attributes, you can check actually what is old by this attribute. So just for you to be clear, I think it's really important for you to understand that inside this part, the particle spawn, it holds all the information that will be initialized when the particle spawns. So for example, usually you have all the initialized particle attributes. You can, for example, override these attributes. And this is another important concept, the flow of the instruction is from the upper part towards down. It's not, a, uh, it's not by case that you have the spawn and the update, because for example, here I initialize the attributes with a random between six and 12. But if I just add a set new parameter and I say size, you can see that right now I am overdubbing the size because uh, I set here a size, but after in the fluxus, I just set a different size. So keep in mind that the order in which you put the module matter. The order is really important. So, uh, for example, this is a classical example. You initialize the particle, you set the location, you have different kind of location. If you set the location, you have uh, some more advanced like skeletal mesh location, shape location, uh, and uh, you have, uh, for example, grid position, uh, or you have box. Ah, it's new. I'm sorry that I am changing for the course. I have the, the newest uh, preview version and changed a little bit the interface from my previous one. So you have here different kind of shapes. For example, you have the radius. You have also the distribution. I mean, there are a lot of uh, um, a lot of options here. And uh, for it's quite common that uh, here you set the f as before. Here I set sphere location, but here I set another location that can be a cylinder, for example. So this is after the previous location. So basically, this will be you can see that. doesn't change so much. So this is another thing. If you check, uh, if I scroll in front, uh, I mean, if I go here, it looks good. But if I start to to uh, scrub back, it starts to go crazy because uh, as many solvers, this happened also in Udini, as many solver, uh, Udini, for example, cache the simulation. So basically, uh, it, it holds the previous frame information, but here we don't have the cache. So basically, uh, the solver know the velocity, so it, it's able to calculate the next frame. But from the next frame, it recalculates velocity. So basically, it doesn't have any idea of the previous frame. So if you scroll back, uh, the, the results are completely randomic because it doesn't know exactly uh, what's happening. It, it's not meant to go backward, basically. So uh, important that, for example, here you set the location, but here you set again the location. So um, it's a little bit, uh, as, as we said before, the order matters. 
and in this case then you set the velocity in this case you, we use add velocity in cone but you can set uh, i don't know add velocity uh, so in this case uh, as before but uh, add velocity as the number as the name suggests is adding the velocity so if you put both they will be summed together this is quite important to understand that the order matters but uh, in this case uh, you uh, hard set the location in this case you sum up the velocity to the previous incoming velocity so uh, here the order matters of course but uh, it uh, it takes in account the previous velocity do not override it so once you set the spawn you enter in the particle update so we have a particle states so basically you have just the option to kill particle when lifetime has elapsed it have some uh, lifetime uh, it have some hookup to some parameters and here you have uh, for example gravity force in this part you put uh, basically all the elements that uh, uh, give uh, to the simulation it's uh, it, the, basically the behavior uh, you have uh, this solve force and velocity this solver basically holds uh, you can see you can enter inside each module and uh, if you just uh, zoom inside it you can see that uh, it explain exactly what's happening you can if you want to just uh, recreate your own solver if you prefer and uh, i will show you just uh, an, a little thing that for example if uh, you have this kind of error the module has unmet dependencies so uh, dependencies so uh, we have uh, for example in this case uh, you have the uh, force module that is applied after the solver and to solve that you basically need to calculate everything that deals with velocity and force before the solver this is really important but uh, if you do not met the uh, dependencies like this you can always or dismiss the, if you really know what you are doing it tells you i know what i'm doing so basically if you dismissed it because maybe you have your own reasons to do that otherwise you can fix the issue and it will be already set up but keep in mind the order matters so basically it will just put it as last of the entire path last you have the render of the particle uh, and here you have different kind of render you have a sprite render that uh, we will see uh, right now what is uh, a sprite uh, that is the basic one you have uh, different kind of render ribbon uh, basically uh, ribbon okay oh i had a crash so right now uh, ribbon is not what uh, we will see for this course probably i don't know maybe yes but uh, uh, so let's uh, talk about what is a sprite or oh, let's talk a little bit about the term that we used that uh, is sprite it's pretty uh, you know uncommon term probably if you probably you already know what is a sprite maybe no so uh, i just show you I enter the wireframe mode and as you can see all those little dots are just uh, like a grid uh, so just keep in mind that in real-time engine everything is uh, triangulated it's not uh, uh, structure with the quadrilaterals it's just everything triangulated so basically sprites are plane that are drawn with a shader and as you can see if i rotate they just by default face my camera direction so if i just put for example you can see 
a basic shape, a plane, is exactly the same. But if I rotate, you can see that it's basically stays in place. But in this case, if I rotate, they always face the camera angle. About that, there is inside the render, the sprite render, there is something that uh, is interesting. That is the alignment and the facing mode. Um, you can, for example, align the particle to velocity. You see that they just turn when the velocity is changing. This is particularly useful, the alignment, if, for example, you add a size by speed, uh, scale sprite size by speed. So we can say 0.2 and uh, 2, for example, or 15. You can see that uh, you have these, that is typical, for example, if you want to get the embers effect, you always scale the sprite uh, by size. And in this case, if uh, I will just show you the difference, if you put an unaligned, you can see that uh, they basically, right now they rotate, but because this is because we have uh, Inside the sprite attributes, we have a rotation to random. If we put unset or direct angles to zero, you have this kind of uh, effects. They stretched because we stretch them by speed. And uh, uh, this is uh, mostly how it deals with uh, the UV of the texture. Uh, it's something that maybe we will see after. But uh, so if you do not uh, align them uh, by velocity, they just uh, align to the same vector. You can see it keeps consistent with the camera. We can say uh, here, an aligned uh, velocity and you can see that right now they align to velocity but they keep the orientation to camera if you want you can you have several different uh, uh, so the facing mode it have several options it can go with the camera position and another important thing that right now seems a little bit abstract, probably, uh, but you can also face a, a custom facing vector. It's clear, it's more clear if I do not align them. Custom face. Uh, face set new one. Right facing. So as you can see right now, they disappear because they face exactly the the forward of the vector, you see? This uh, can be used, many times you use that, uh, for example, if you want uh, to make something appear, you know, like on the ground, if it's something that is exactly on the ground, you don't need it or you don't want it to move uh, according to the camera, so basically you lock the facing of the sprite on the upward vector. So this is particularly used and useful as well. I will just leave face camera. Another element that it's really important for now is uh, the sorting. So this help uh, to sort uh, 
the particle according to a certain kind of uh, view depth, uh, view distance, and so on. This helps uh, sometimes when you have particles that uh, uh, pop up uh, because uh, the system maybe have some issues in uh, uh, sort uh, like smoke happen a lot. So basically you have the sprite of uh, some uh, smoke that starts to pop out and uh, you can solve uh, in a certain way this uh, through this sort mode. Uh, last thing that I want to show you about uh, sprite is uh, a function that is the sub UV. So just to, to have a clear view in mind, I will clean a little bit the system. I don't want to change anything. I will just clean all the stuff and I want a spawn rate like two. You can see we have here the point and I want it to be like direct set one and I want it to be uniform 50 so it's pretty clear and uh, I want the life to be 0 0.5 Okay, so we can see it flash. So right now, each particle have, uh, or basically is is just a, a plane that is spawned with this logic in um, with this logic in the world. So um, this is probably you already know, but you can see a plane if you see it from this part. It, you, it disappear because basically by default meshes in real time engine have the back face uh, cow so um you need to specify if you want uh, like uh, double face material but of course this will bring uh, uh, a certain kind of uh, um it will be more intense so you should use this only in particular cases but for example, we have this dot that is flashing and I can make a material and the uh, test sub UV. I will just make this. I don't care for now about uh, transparency. I will make it opaque. And I just save it. And uh, here I go inside the sprite render and I grab my material and it, it is compiling and as you can see right now we have our plane with all this stuff I, why i put one two three four because i want you to introduce you uh the sub uv so basically the material didn't change we have this and uh, we have uh, for example let's say that we have a flip book of four element we can say, we just scroll, we have sub UV image index and we can say that this flipbook is two by two. And you can see that right now we are just focusing over this. I can uh, at the particle spawn add a sub UV animation, for example, and say how many frame we have and frame probably is three. Uh, Start frame probably is three. Zero, one, two, three. Uh, I am not. Let's see. Two, two, three, four. Yes, it's correct. So basically, you can see that right now it takes a, a random number between zero and three. Of course, we are doing it in spawn because uh, if we do it in anime in a particle update i will show you this is the result basically we have everything flickering and it is not what we want we can use of course sub uv animation inside the particle update 
this is linear, but we need the tree frame. So you can see that you can see that uh, we have uh, the animation. The animation is uh, uh, is looking up uh, around uh, the normalized age. Uh, we, you can also say I want a float. This is something um really common to have a curve in this case you can see that we start from four and uh, we go down and you can for example key like this this is quite common for example for explosion in this case we want zero and here we want one so in this case, for example, we can do something like that. It's quite common in explosion to have a faster read be uh, between uh, the frame. You can also set, uh, um, let's say, yeah, the sub UV. Uh, I already set it up. This is usually help a little bit to blend between the frame. But what I want you to have crystal clear is the function sub UV. You set the number of tile here, and then you can control the animation here. There is another way to do this. We will see it in material, but it's more related to flipbook. Of course, can be, let's say that uh, we don't want uh, here the sub UV. I get rid of that and uh, I want uh, one, sorry, one, yeah, one and one. We have some other stuff like the pivot, uh, the pivot of the particles, because basically right now the pivot at 0 0.5. So for example, if I say Zero. You can see that uh, it started with x0 zero and uh, 0 0.5. So the point uh, is here and the sprite is uh, designed here. So if I say zero, it will be like here at the top because the, the, it starts from here. If I say one, it's here. If I want to pin here in the texture, I just say 0.51 and you can see the point is here and uh, the the text the sprite is in this part. So let's say 0 0.5 0 0.5 so basically it's centered to the point. Uh and uh, I will just show you that you can do it also here. We'll convert this to texture object and I will just use a flip book basically it takes uh, the texture the texture coordinate as uh, uvs then uh, i can make the time we can use uh, the frac as well but uh, it's not necessary as animation phase i can multiply it multiply by point three. and this will be our animation phase we need to set the number of columns and rows that in this case is two and we are free to go we can just say result and say You can see, probably is very one. You can see that we have D 
these things. So uh, I will just introduce you another element that we will use a lot that are dynamic parameters. So let's say that we want this to be controlled by the particle system. I can just use a dynamic parameter and say here, uh, I want the parameter to be called uh, anim phase. And I want the default value to start at zero. So I connect that here, save. And here you can see that it's always at zero, but here in the update, I can say, I want the dynamic parameter. You can see that you already lock to the correct parameter and I can say float from curve. And you can see that basically it works exactly as the other one. But we are using, and this can be used for a lot of things. We will use dynamic material parameters a, a lot, really. Uh, and of course, you use it in the particle update because if you move to spawn, basically it doesn't do anything because you can see it starts every time here. You can, for example, use it here if you put like a random range float. So basically every time it put a different number. This is why you should use in spawn because spawn is run only when the particle uh, is um, basically it starts it, its own life. 